Hello folks, I've spent most of the last two weeks trying to get this bloody thing to work properly. So I thought it's time to have a look at some of the things that can go wrong with this kind of 3D printing. This is just based on my own experience and trying to get things to stick to the bed properly. So if you want proper advice, probably should go somewhere else. Anyway, the first and most obvious thing. The print bed needs to be absolutely 100% perfectly level. So to level it, you use a sheet of paper. This is the thickness tolerance that you have to level it to. So it's quite difficult to get it right. And you have to have it absolutely flat so it sits perfectly against the um, film inside the printer. The way you do that is by so there's a ball mechanism inside this head here with a screw in the top that you can use to tighten it up. So you untighten it, wobble this around until it's flat, and then tighten this back up here. There's plenty of videos on bed levelling if you want to know how to do that properly, go and look at someone else's. So that's the first and probably the most common reason for prints to fail. Incidentally, while I was rebuilding this, I did find that they'd actually put two screws in here from the factory. So when I was tightening it up properly, um, it would tighten against the other screw, but not necessarily properly against the print head. So that was, I think, one of the reasons I was having issues printing. The second thing you have to make sure is that this surface here is perfectly flat. It should be from the factory, but if you, some people recommend sanding it to improve adhesion and things like that. If you do that, make absolutely sure that you have it against a sheet of glass or something while you're doing it so it stays absolutely flat. Otherwise you're just going to make your problems worse. The result of that kind of thing, if you don't have your bed level perfectly, is that you get bits of prints sticking to the bottom of the film in here instead of to the top in here. Now that ends up with things that look a bit like a smooth camera panning shot this here. So that has failed to stick to the print head and has just been printed again and again and again on the base, which is obviously not good. One of the next things to check is if your FET film is in good condition. So I can't actually show you this because there's some resin in here, but hopefully you can hear this. You can hear the noise it makes because it's tight. And there is actually a fail, another one of those failed prints in here right now that I need to get out. So you have to make sure that film is tight and it's clean. If you clean it after every failed print you have, I'm going to keep that closed now to stop my resin getting too cured accidentally. So yeah, replace the film on a semi-regular basis, and if it starts getting scratched or faded um, due to, say, cleaning it with IPA or cleaning it with a cloth that's a little bit scratchy, then it's probably time to start replacing it, because all of that is going to make this very sticky, which makes it even harder to get things to stick to the print head. So the next thing to think about is the conditions that you're printing in. It's very cold here at the moment. This is I'm pretty sure is a big part of the reason I've had so many prints failing and is also the reason I've employed this chap here. This is a fan heater which is very expensive to run but cheaper than having loads and loads of failed prints that I have to pay for resin for because resin is also expensive hence why there is a resin bottle here that also gets warmed up at the same time. Talking about resin, next thing to look at is whether your resin is in decent nick. So keeping these bottles in a room temperature environment is probably best. Trying to keep them away from sunlight and so on. And using ones that are relatively fresh is also a good idea. So you see we have an expiry date printed on here. The longer that is, the better chance you have of printing successfully. This is partly because um, the resin will 
separate inside the bottle, so you have to give it a good shake before you use it, and then wait for the bubbles to release, otherwise you'll try printing into air gaps and they won't stick. So another thing to look out for is, well, separation of the resin, so some of it you get watery stuff at the top, and you'll get some heavier stuff underneath, so it might print fine for a second, for a few layers, and then start getting weaker and weaker and weaker until it pulls off. So make sure it's mixed properly, and don't mix resins is another big advice. So, I have in this bottle an absolutely disgusting mix of about three or four types of resin. It doesn't work. You have to try and compromise between the individual settings for each resin, which I'll talk about in a second, and it just doesn't really work. Things separate too easily, and it's just too much of a faff. It means you lose the bottom, sort of maybe a few centimetres from each bottle of resin, but to be honest it's worth it just to get proper prints out of it. So, what I was saying about resin. The diff all the different colours and the different types, the transparent stuff, the solid stuff, has different curing properties. So you have to set a different exposure time is the key one to worry about. So this stuff I'm using at the moment, the green stuff. Let's get one of my models out. So this is the test print that comes with the machine. This stuff cures pretty quickly and is very slightly flexible. I don't know where you can see that. Basically the longer you cure it the less flexible it gets. This will get to this condition in 8 to 10 seconds. Another resin I've tried is this white stuff. This takes maybe twice as long to get to the same kind of condition, finished condition. So you have to be very careful with that in the machine. Another useful trick is increasing the base layer exposure time which can um, help adhesion to the bed, which is a useful trick, but again you have to remember that overexposing stuff can mean you lose detail because the light bleeds around the specific bits you're trying to model into the surrounding area and you get slightly oversized parts. Another thing is the supports you use, so if you're using a slicer like Chai 2 box, I think that's how it's pronounced maybe, It'll do auto supports and things like that for you. Usually it's pretty good at those, or at least the latest versions are, but occasionally, like here, hopefully you can see this. The bottom of this wheel is not printed because this support wasn't quite adequate. I've got the same thing in a few other places, this bit's a bit wobbly, and so on. And there's a few bits here, there should be a sideboard here, and it hasn't printed at all because there's no support at the bottom. So auto support useful, useful for doing the bulk of things, but misses out every now and then. So a few more things to show you, but we'll have a look at some actual prints for that. So this first print we're going to look at is one of the examples of things where bits of prints don't stick to the bed properly. So this is in a kind of mix of that white and green resin. So remember when I was saying don't mix resins, this is why, because the settings you'd normally use for white didn't work, the settings you'd normally use for green didn't work, and somewhere in the middle you end up with this. So the larger area that's stuck, large areas tend to stick very well, which is why you have um, the option of putting a raft on your prints. I'd recommend doing that all the time. Um, but yeah, the smaller areas up here where they're not connected to anything else, haven't stuck so well. Now this one's unusual but a useful demonstrator because it's actually picked them back up later on when it's printed some other parts. So you can see this is part of the raft which is supposed to be level here. That's the result of using the wrong settings and mixing resins. Next point, move it around a little bit, these two. These are an example of me being a massive spanner. So, your FET film is one of the few areas where you don't want protection. Now you should be able to see here, 
this surface is pretty lumpy. This is because I forgot to remove the protective film that comes on the FEP film. Basically, I'm an idiot. I'm amazed this actually stuck to the print bed because the protective film isn't nowhere near as frictionless as the FEP, but it's stuck. Pretty impressed with that. But the light transmission is was nowhere near as good, so you end up with all these lumps and bumps on the side. Same kind of thing on here. You can see, hopefully, we can get it caught in the light. This sort of area here, and a couple of bits around the back here and here, and all down this side. So again, these prints, unfortunately, unusable. Another issue. Smooth camera work is what you can see here. So, this is another result of things not sticking properly. So, you can see all the way around, it's fairly good, fairly flat, and then all of a sudden, if I weigh this down, this corner's lifted up here. So, this is a general example of warp. This is probably because I didn't have a high enough exposure time on the bottom few layers. So this bit's all stuck, this bit hasn't, it's lifted up, and as a result, I don't know how well you can see this on camera, but the front section here is warped upwards, because basically as it's been printing all of this stuff, because this is too high, has been shunted upwards. So it's curved that up at the end to a fairly noticeable degree. Again, unfortunately, because the rest of this is quite a good print, unfortunately, also unusable. And the last point to make, pretty similar to a previous one, this is one of the more irritating 3D prints I've had. Everything on here went perfectly. As you can see, hopefully, detail's pretty good. Everything's come out to size, fitted the chassis I wanted to do perfectly. I'd almost got it right first time with this, except it's got a big hole in it. This one, to be fair to me, wasn't really my fault. I didn't do anything particularly wrong here, this was just a random print error, which is the most frustrating to have. But it's happened on the front there, and on this side, this entire section here, before I removed all the bits. It was actually a pretty similar example to this one, where things have lifted off. And there are bits sticking out the side here. Again, random printer, I reran it with exactly the same settings about half an hour after this one had finished, and it worked perfectly. So sometimes it's just worth printing it again, just to see if the errors you had were random or not. So that's it for now. There's probably many more things that can go wrong with 3D printing, and well, there definitely are because mine doesn't fix yet. So, best of luck with your own prints, and hopefully, it's a little more understandable why I'm a bit slow sometimes getting prints made and that sort of thing. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and wish me luck fixing this for the next however long it takes.